live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life on this Monday, March 28th. I'm Courtney Savala. And I'm Derek Shore. So glad to have you with us today. Coming up today on Houston Life. We are, of course, talking about the Oscars. <laughs> Better believe we are talking about that smack, how Chris Rock is doing, and what was Will Smith doing later in the evening? And Houston-based comedian Koo Ejenti gives us his take on what happened last night. Plus, from the red carpet to everyday looks, we're serving Oscar fashion at that more affordable price. Hi, Lauren. Oh, that is so pretty. Here is your chance to weigh in on the slap heard around the world. I am standing by with what you have to say about the Will Smith, Chris Rock, situation. But for now, I'm going to send it back over to you guys, Derek and Courtney. All right. Ooh, I, I can know. feel that slap on my face still. Ooh, it's I know. burning from last night. <laughs> Here's the thing. Everybody's calling it a slap. Let's just call it what it was an assault, right? The Film Academy just announced it condemns Will Smith's slapping of Chris Rock and it's exploring, quote, further uh, consequences. Oscars is truly what everybody is talking about. It used to take fashion and the films would take sort of main stage, but you know, this is the story that everybody's talking about it's today. It's wild, and Chris Rock said he's not going to press charges. Had he done so, it would have been assault and battery, punishable with a $2,000 fine and up to six months in jail. Uh, we'll see if he changes his mind and decides to press charges, but a lot of people, mixed reaction to on social media, some people applauded Will Smith, which shocked me. Quite surprising, men and women on that camp mm. as well. And immediately, we called our friends over at Entertainment Tonight to get the full scoop. A little while ago, I chatted with Nichelle Turner and Kevin Frazier. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Kevin. Uh, I know that you guys haven't hey, slept Courtney. all night. Hey, Let's talk about the big moment from last night. Um, I still can't even believe what we just saw on TV. Chris Rock, Will Smith, have you all been able to break this down for us? No, I think we're still trying to process it like everybody else everybody as well. He is still tripping. Yeah, I know. I mean, we have, yes, we have kind of gone step by step through. The one thing we still don't understand is why. Um, and so, yeah, we can start at the beginning. Okay, well, let's start with the slap, okay? Let's show you that real quick. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh. Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Nick Mike's name out to <laughs> Wow, dude. Um, in the break, after that moment, Denzel Washington, Tyler Perry, they came over and um, talked to Will. And then Bradley mm -hmm. Cooper talked to him. Will was crying. He was very emotional. Mm -hmm. And um, he has been emotional for quite some time because he had a so he expressed a similar sentiment to Nichelle after the SAG Awards. Yeah, I mean, he did. He, he told me a couple weeks ago in tears that, you know, he felt he was charged with a different direction in his life and that he really felt um, that he had to stand in protection of the black women in his life and that he felt it was really special to have done that on this film, to be doing it in his life and that that was really um, how he would continue to walk through the world. Um, so I think he felt like he was doing that. Um, I'm not sure if that's why really? he was emotional during the break. I, I don't I don't know. I feel like Will's been on the verge of just this emotion yeah. for some time. Um, yeah. It's been a, it has been a lot. And you saw it in his acceptance speech about an hour after the incident when he won the award for best actor. Check this out, Courtney. I'm being called on in my life to love people and to protect people. And I know to do what we do, you got to be able to take abuse and you got to smile and you got to pretend like that's okay. I want to apologize to the Academy. Thank you. Uh, uh, Hoping Academy invites me back. Whew. 
It's interesting that he said there that he felt like, you know, in this business he knows that he has to, like, laugh it off a lot of times or take what he calls abuse, but he didn't. No, and you, you think back to the history of that relationship in 2016, mm -hmm. Chris, went in on Jada yeah, he did. during his opening monologue. So there were already sensitivities. Now, we're told the Oscar staff was trying to decide whether they're going to remove Will and ask him to leave after that outburst. The Academy tweeted that it does not condone violence of any form, and the LAPD said they're aware of an incident at the event, and Chris Rock declined to file a police report. We really want to know. We, we should also say Where's we hope that people were consoling Chris yeah. and checking on him. We yeah. haven't seen him. Um, in room. You know, and, and I just hope that he's okay. Yeah, because well. that now at this point where you haven't heard anything, you're worried, Courtney. Yeah, no, I agree with you guys. And there's there's so many things to unpack here. And the other one is, too, that this now overshadowed so many other headlines from the Academy Awards, including Quest Love, who that's why Chris Rock was up there for to name the, the best documentary. And, and so his yep. his entire acceptance speech. I think got overshadowed because people were rewinding at home. They were looking at social media. Was this real? Was it fake? And I don't think anybody heard his acceptance speech or even realized he won. It's a beautiful acceptance speech. It's for an amazing documentary, Summer of Soul. And, you know, when he went backstage um, into the press room, they asked him about the incident. And he said, I'm here to talk about Summer of Soul, not yeah. what happened before us. Right. Yeah, it robbed everybody, um, you know, after that of their moment. And, and actually, subsequently, the next day, it just it, it hijacked the entire Oscars because we're not talking about all of these history-making, fantastic, beautiful moments. The three women that got on that stage and did an amazing yeah. job hosting. You know, the black man and the black woman who produced this show and produced a great Oscar show. We're not talking about all of those wins. We're mm -hmm. talking about the big L that happened uh, in the middle of the show. Yeah. Yeah. And, very and well said. real quick before we before we go real quick, can we show you that afterwards, um, Will went to the Vanity Fair party. Oh, he party. got it together. Yeah, he, oh. he went out to the Vanity Fair. <laughs> He did not let the yeah. moment steal his joy. He celebrated his Oscar. Yeah, so. Well, he stole his own joy. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good point, Michelle. And he Good got point. his own joy back. Yeah. So. Hey, real quick, go. guys. We got to talk about so how much more to talk about. H-Town was represented. H-Town was represented last night, too. I mean, Queen B opened the show, y'all. She did. But Meg was there, too. Meg, Meg Stallion, Stallion performed was performed the um, first time a rapper ever performed yes. on, a female rapper performed on that stage. And she was great. Yeah, she was really, really great. She, I love that that mashup with her and the, the folks from Encanto Conto, singing yep. We Don't Talk About Bruno. So many great moments last night. Yeah, H-Town was there representing last mm. night big time. And Chloe yes, and so, Halle were yep. there as well. Like, all of the good stuff. Yes, yeah, so so hot on many levels. Okay, guys, we know we've got it covered tonight coming up on ET from the fashion, the latest on Will Smith, Chris Rock, all of the things. We appreciate you staying up and chatting with us today. Of course. Thanks, Courtney. All right, Courtney. Those are the duo. They have it. They've got all the answers. Make sure to watch them tonight. Entertainment tonight, 6.30 p.m. right here on KPRC2. Will Smith partying like nothing happened. No big deal, right? Like it never happened. Yeah. All right, why don't we bring in Lauren Kelly with today's question of the day. Hi, Lauren. Hey, guys. Well, we want to weigh in on the slap heard around the world. The Chris Rock, Will Smith encounter at the Oscars. Let's get to some of your comments real quickly. What I do want to think about, though, Look at all those different angle points that Nichelle and Kevin brought up last night yes. that Will was, you know, over here, over there. But wow, just a lot to take in. Kevin writes in, Will Smith's marriage is open to everything but jokes. We should be talking about Troy Kutzer making Oscars history as the first deaf man to win an mm. Academy Amen. Award. Amen. Absolutely. So overshadowed that moment. Yeah. My goodness. Oh, Veronica says Chris Rock brought that on himself. That was uncalled for. However, Will should have confronted him after the Oscars. That's 
that's actually a really good point. Can you just wait? It's never really time for any of that type of assault to happen. Stacy says, pampered and entitled Hollywood celebrities acting stupid. Nothing new there. Well, you guys head over to the Houston Life Facebook page. Join the conversation. We will share more of your comments a little bit later on. But you guys, what do you all think? Courtney, Derek? A lot of people are saying that Chris Rock's comment was in poor taste. He's a comedian. Right. They're, they make people uncomfortable, right? And I also think, regardless of the comments, to assault someone, right. it is never okay to to hit someone. No. Never. We teach our kids at a very young age, keep yes. your hands to yourself. Adults have the same rules. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. All so right, bizarre. Lauren, thank you so much. Sure, guys. You know, over the weekend, uh, besides, of course, the Oscars, uh, back here at home on Friday night, I had the chance to be at a fantastic event late Friday. This was for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, their winter ball, finally in person for 2022. Uh, there was an array of recognition, so much money raised for the Crohn's and Colitis foundation it was lovely to be there and in person again and at our table you can see here's Pam Campbell her daughter Taylor Melanie and Jerry Martin uh, Pam is part of our sales team of course Jerry is our GM with me I was kind of in between up and down from the table uh, and then I was also honored to be next to Matt Kovich who you've seen on the show here his wife Wendy was just released from the hospital today she had emergency surgery and I'm there with her kids Cameron and Cole she was the honored here um, and was not able to be there, but she has a ball gown waiting for her, Aww. and I'm sure they're going to do dinner night or something at home where she can wear that ball gown and be the princess that she needs to be for the day. It's such great news. She was released from the hospital. Absolutely. So, Wendy, we're thinking about you, and congrats, and it looks like it was a beautiful event. It really was. It was so lovely, and glad they were able to be in person this year. Very, very nice. All right, still ahead on Houston Life, time for a little spring cleaning, and today we're tackling your home office, whether that means your kitchen table or the corner of your bedroom. We've got four important tips to help you declutter and organize your at-home workspace. Oh boy, I feel like that was written for me. But <laughs> yeah. first, local comedian Ku Igenti puts his spin on Oscar night in our H-Town sit-down. That's coming up when Houston Life returns right after the break. Welcome back to Houston Life. It is time now for our H-Town sit-down. Let's meet today's guest. He's a Nigerian comedian based out of Houston and has been traveling all over the country showcasing his unique brand of observational humor. Ku and Genti host a talk show called Standing Room Only on Facebook and recently released his second comedy album. Today, he's ready to drop the mic in our H-Town sit-down. <laughs> Ku Igenti, come on out to Studio B. Hello, Hello guys. How you guys how are doing? You? Nice Welcome. To you. Nice, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you. And I know, uh, looking at the calendar, you've got a busy month ahead. Yes, I do. Tour shows. Very, very busy schedule, but it's good. That's what it's comics supposed to be. You have a lot of show. Because if I'm staying home, that means my girlfriend says, "You know, what? you got to get a job. You got to get out." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get a regular job. So, yeah, that's good that I'm traveling, doing shows, all that good stuff. So, yeah, I'm excited about and it. And a comedy album as well? Yeah, I dropped two comedy albums in five years. Yeah. The first album was Your Favorite Africa, and the second was Catastrophe. And that's doing pretty good on all streaming sites. It's doing awesome, yeah. Oh, we love nice. that. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah, that's well, the uh, guy right there. That's me. That's you. <laughs> and April 6th, 8 p.m., Christian's Tailgate, White Oak Bar, the 8th, you're at the Riot Comedy Club. Yep. And then May 19th and 22nd, you're Come and Take It Easy Comedy Festival in Houston. So, a lot of yeah. places to go see Ku E. A lot, a lot of choices. Let's weigh in. Let's have you weigh in on this whole Will Smith, Chris Rock situation. Who are you? I don't ever heard of him. <laughs> Can you refresh my memory of what we're talking about here? It's, it's, you know, it's crazy. It's like when I, I my phone literally blew up. Like my phone's literally going because I'm a fan of both of them. Right. It's to me it feels like watching your parents go to a divorce. That's yeah. what it feels like. Two favor of my people are just yeah. getting at it. I'm like, it's it's crazy. It's like a surreal thing. I literally thought it was a bit. Like we, he, I think everybody When did. he smacked Chris Rock, I was like, oh, this is a harsh bit. Because people were still laughing at the time. Then when Will Smith started yelling at him, then everybody go, oh. They realized it wasn't a joke at that point. My, when I saw uh, Nipita Yango's face, he was like, I was like, she's real. Yeah, <laughs> right? That's not fake, because her face was like, oh. 
didn't know what to he do. He went for like Fresh Prince to I Am Legend that fast. It was crazy. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> so, you know, you brought up a good point, too, in the beginning that, you know, this is when comedians come on stage, he was there to present a award. He wasn't yeah. there to, you know, work the room. But that's usually what they do, right? They, they make jokes. That's what they do. Comics, I, I think we're so sensitive nowadays. I think because people are super sensitive. And I think that comics are supposed to push the envelope. Right. We're supposed to poke the bear. We're supposed to kind of bring the celebrities down from reality. Because all these celebrities are on the, like, I'm celebrity. I'm a big top. Then the comics are just supposed to bust you, you know, make you right. feel. Keep you down notch. Nice. And that's what he was doing. I personally don't like the joke. I thought it was a really cheesy joke. But at the same time, still a joke nonetheless. Because it went, it sort of targeted uh, Jada. I mean, she has an autoimmune disease. She didn't just yes, do yes. it for a cut. She has her alopecia. Hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, he didn't know. I don't think he knew. Honestly, I don't think he knew because I think he's not a malicious person. Mm -hmm. It's for him to make that joke, he says G.I. Jane 2. I've seen G.I. Jane 1. That's actually a great movie. I think it was actually saying that you look like you just filmed that movie because it's, it's a, what about a woman that was, went to the Navy SEAL and she was really bad, you know? She was yeah. cool, she was really good. So it was just like, I think it was a homage to that movie, but it was kind of cheesy, but I don't think it was worth getting assaulted. That was crazy. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and regardless of whether or not you like the joke, I mean, I think at the end of the day, for someone to assault someone, on a live television bra, any anywhere, it's not okay. Uh, some good news though, before we let you go. So Queen B, Beyonce, and Megan yeah. Thee Stallion. I love I both mean, of them. That performance, this in case y'all missed this, uh, this performance lovely. was on a tennis court in Compton where the Williams sisters trained, where wow. they used to practice with that. their dad. So that was part of this. You know, they specifically had her do it there. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful moment. Megan Thee Stallion too. Her cameo performance at the top of the show. This was a surprise. For First time of the Oscars, she said she was nervous. I gotta tell you, she belongs on that stage. Yes. She owned the house last night. So no, I'm, I'm happy for her because I actually know her mom. Her mom passed away. She did one of my first yeah. shows ever like six years ago. So she blew up like Liddy four years ago. It's kind of like crazy. I remember her six years ago doing my one of my shows. Oh. And now to see it like global is like yeah. amazing. It's like God is good. She's like, I'm so proud of her. She's representing Houston to the fullest. I love it. You know, I always say there's always a Houston connection. Yeah. Always. All yeah. The stories. Like if you see the picture of her, she doesn't even look like herself. She right. looks like a global superstar. But back then, her mom was like, this girl's going to be a star one day. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. And now to see him going, her mom was right. She was right. Yeah. Her mom went by Hollywood. She passed away. Oh. She had like a uh, clog in her heart and that killed her. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Well, oh. she's looking down from above. Ku Ijenti, thanks so much no, for stopping No, thanks for having me, guys. Tonight. It was fun. Yeah, come back and see us, okay? Always. And uh, we'll remind people about all the tour dates and all the stops that you have coming up. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Great Good to see catch you. up with you. Awesome. And when we come back, upgrading your living room, a chair that's as comfortable as Grandpa's old recliner, but way more stylish. All right. Sounds good to me. Also, health care that comes to you, how your next trip to the doctor could be as easy as answering your front door. We're not just talking blood work, but EKGs, ultrasounds, all done at home. That's when Houston Life returns right after this. A trip to the doctor's office or ER is rarely convenient. You pile the kids into the car or wait for hours in the emergency room. Well, Dispatch Health is making it easier for you and your family by offering same-day service that comes to you at your home. Nurse pra practitioner Sammy Melendez with Dispatch Health is joining us now. Disp Dispatch Health, Sammy. A little tongue-tied here. Tell us a little bit more about this service. I mean, I, th I think a lot of people would be surprised to know, instead of going to the clinic, essentially you come to them. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so Dispatch Health, actually, we're celebrating our fourth year anniversary here in the Houston market this month. And uh, we come to your location. You said your house, absolutely. But we've also been to the local universities, the office buildings downtown. So we go to the patient and we can manage same day type, uh, you know, medical care needs. And we can also manage complex cases for, you know, up to 30 days for our, our sicker patients. So, and the same day service, that's what's incredible. You can call, uh, someone shows up to your house. It seems like this would be great for someone who has even limited mobility, um, you know, like the woman we're seeing on the screen. What kinds of conditions can you actually treat in someone's home? Yeah, so a lot of people will be surprised to learn about the things that we can take care of. Uh, you know, we can do, like I said, simple things, you know, cough, cold, viral type things, uh, you know, laceration repairs. So people need stitches. We come at home and manage those. 
And we can also, you know, take care of sicker patients with pneumonia, for example, uh, COPD exacerbation, congestive heart failure. Uh, I mean, we have all the tools necessary to provide exceptional care to our patients, short of anything that's life or death. What about uh, things like blood work, your labs, ultrasounds, or other types of testing at home? Yeah, so we have a moderate complexity lab uh, in all of our markets, and basically means we can do a, a large amount of testing at home at the bedside. Uh, we can do blood work, check electrolytes, uh, check a few different things that we can do at the bed. At the bedside, uh, we do point of care testing, things like, you know, you'll see at the, you know, at the clinic, flu, strep, COVID, mono, um, and then if we need to order any type of imaging, we also can order in-home imaging services for x-rays, uh, ultrasounds, things of that nature. Wow, that is so cr incredible. Uh, let's talk about price and insurance, because I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, okay, how much does it cost, and is this service covered by medical insurance? Yeah, yeah and I think that's, one of, that's a great question. And fortunately, so we're, you know, not in a, a new company, been around for about eight years, roughly here uh, in the country. and. We've been able to make our leaders have been able to get great relationships and contracts with pretty much every major insurance company, uh, also except Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, we bill to that of an urgent care type copay if that's what you have in your insurance policy. And we also have the convenience of offering uh, a cash self or a self pay for people who are uninsured as well and includes all of our services. So typically a bill looks sort of like going to an urgent care uh, facility, is that correct? Yeah, uh, you know, for example, you know, on your insurance card, if it's, it'll say to copay, if it's $75, that's what uh, you're responsible for. And if it's uh, a self pay, it's $275 if somebody is uninsured. But again, we come to them, everything that we have in our kits includes IV fluids, antibiotics, anything that we have in our kits, you know, is included in that so we can take care of our patients. All right. And you're open seven days a week, 365 days a year. Sammy Melendez, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And if you would like to learn more about Dispatch Health and the services available for patients, you can visit DispatchHealth.com or call 281-204-8727. Well, speaking of your health, Joe Sam is standing by with a solution to help those who suffer with back pain. Hi, Joe. Hey there. Yeah, that's right. The living room is the main room for many families, as we all know. But how do you get mom, dad, the kids, even grandma or grandpa to agree on one piece of furniture? Not impossible. I went on a hunt for a chair that's great for naps, getting work done, and it's pretty stylish. Hey, we're at Danish Inspirations. Let's head inside and check out their stressless recliners. Jan, it is such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Welcome to Danish Inspirations, Joe. Absolutely. So we're standing in front of these beautiful stressless recliners. Tell us a bit about them. Well, stressless recliners we've been selling for 40 years. Mm. It's the most comfortable chair that you will ever sit in. I'm I glad you, you mentioned that. it. I'm glad you mentioned comfortable because I have to try it out. So let's please, take a seat because do. this is awesome. I'm going to yeah. pick the red one here because that's my color. Oh, oh yes. And the minute you sit in, you can definitely feel the comfort. Why are these recliners, these stressless recliners, so special? Well, the lumbar support is amazing. And the quality of all the foam is amazing. And we've been selling these chairs for 40 years. Mm. And the average lifetime of a chair is 25 years. Wow. And the record is 35 years. We've had a customer who had them for 35 years. So people really get the work out of these chairs here. And they're really, really comfortable. So they really enjoy when they have them for that long. Yeah, it, it's it's amazing chair. You know, you have like three positions. You can tighten them up and just sit and work on a computer. Mm -hmm. You can go into the TV position and watch TV or take a nap. My and favorite you, thing to do. <laughs> and if you want to take a real nap, you can push this forward and let go, and then you have oh. the sleep position, we call it. Oh, yes, this is great. And I know a lot of people are going to be looking forward to checking out some of the recliners that you have here. So we're sitting in the signature. 
Stress's recliner, but you also have the classic. The classic base is, is the, the regular wood base that we had for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And remember, this chair is approved by the American Chiropractic Association as the best chair for your back. Wow. So if people bring in a prescription from their chiropractor, they don't pay sales tax. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be great for young of age and those older of age. Any age group will, will benefit from this. You know, as I said to the young people, you'll save a lot in chiropractor bills later in life. But we have about 30 different styles of chairs, and we show about 12 of them. And then they also have sofas, power sofas, power chairs as well as has come out. So there's a huge selection of, we are the biggest dealer in Texas. What are your customers saying about these stressless recliners? What do they say? They say it's comfort, it's quality, it's a great look, and the choices of 50 letters, just a great investment for yourself. It really is, and I think that when we talk about investments, you guys are giving away a really special promotion on the signature stressless recliners that we have here. Yes, the wing recliner we're sitting in is $400 off in all Paloma leathers through April 4th. Mm. So that's that's an amazing deal that they want a couple of times a year. And for people who are looking to get information about Danish Inspirations and the stressless recliners, tell them how they can do that. Yeah, go to danishinspirations.com or come to 2775 Fondra near Westheimer. Email us at info at danishinspirations.com or follow us on Instagram and Facebook. That's all. That's how simple it is. <laughs> and I know what's even simpler is sitting in these chairs and taking a nap. That's my favorite part. And I know a lot of people are going to enjoy coming to check out the stressless recliners here because this is going to change your life literally and change your sleep too. <laughs> it is. It is. And again, with the 25 years longevity, you were talking about 50 cents per night. Oh. So let's say that and just maybe say good night. Yeah. A great investment in your sleep. Good yeah. night. Okay. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it was pretty comfortable. Now, anyone with a prescription for Stressless will be able to remove sales tax for any of their products. For more information, you can visit them at danishinspirations.com or stressless.com. I'll also have a link on our website, houstonlife.tv. Now let's send things over to Lauren for a look at what's coming up next on Houston Life. Hey, Joe. The restaurant and bar industry really took a hit during COVID. Tough guy John Taffer from the TV show Bar Rescue is chatting with us all about how he's helping the nightlife industry make a comeback. It's going to be good, and we'll get a check of what is coming up for the news at 4 o'clock, including a look at your afternoon forecast. Looks nice out there. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Monday. Yeah, earlier in our question of the day, we asked you to weigh in on the Chris Rock Will Smith encounter at the Oscars. Here's some more of what you had to say. Tia writes in, so Will Smith can bell or slap Chris Rock, but I can't slap my idiot of a coworker. I'm pretty sure if I did, I'd lose my chance at employee of the month and HR would highly advise against it. Mm -hmm. Good point, so Tia. Cece writes in, both were wrong, end of story. Mm. Okay, Fair put a button on that. Yeah, sure did. All right, let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up. The news at the top of the hour. It's still a talker, guys. I think it will oh, be yeah. for quite some time. It certainly yeah. is going to be. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to zip my lip on this one. <laughs> I just, I'll reserve, <laughs> yes. I, it was unfortunate for everybody involved, I yeah. think. Yeah, you know, yeah. a lot of questions and yeah, it's yeah. It's starting a lot of conversation. <laughs> you know what? So we'll leave it at mm -hmm. that. And the conversation obviously continues on the Houston Lines Facebook page as well as our page. But you guys, mm -hmm. happy Monday. Hopefully everyone had a great yeah. weekend. And Frank, it's pretty toasty out there today. Windy as well. It's windy. It's warm. It's going to continue to be that way tomorrow. And then Wednesday uh -oh. is the day to watch. Okay. I know. So there's a look outside. 81, 82, 83. It's been really nice today. 83 now at Hobbs. 79 in Galveston. It's going to continue to be right there in the 80s for the better part of the afternoon. If there's any fly in the ointment, it is that oak pollen. It is very high. Ragweed is on the board. So is grass. Mulch spores are low, but they're there. I blogged about all of this pollen. Here's looking at you, kid. There you go. Click to Houston.com slash weather. So check that out. Walking the dog. Make sure the dogs are nice and brushed and the cats too before they bring all that pollen inside. 84, 80, 78, 76 at 7 o'clock. So it's going to be a really pleasant evening. Here's what we're watching. You can see on the water vapor. I'm going to zip in here a bit right into Los Angeles. This low is see that spin. That's what's heading into the country. That's going to bring this front into Texas by tomorrow. And then it starts to move into our part of Texas Wednesday morning. So there's Tuesday. There's Wednesday.
Wednesday morning through Dallas. For us, because really moving out of here by 1 o'clock, we're going to go tighten this up coming up at 4 o'clock. But that's the next big weather maker for us. So we'll talk a lot more about that. 84 for tomorrow. Could reach 86 uh, once it's all said and done on Wednesday. But a 90% chance of rain. And then 76. Look how it cools on Thursday. And then as we go into the weekend, it looks pretty good. So all of that coming up at 4. Okay, look forward to it, Frank. Thank you. Also, what we've got coming up in the news department, a man is now charged with the deaths of two people who were crossing the street. Yeah, Houston police say 27-year-old Donovan Harris is charged with intoxication manslaughter. He's accused of hitting a husband and a wife. Now, what we're learning about the victims and the suspect in this crash coming up. Plus, we are tracking the latest in a hearing for those who attended last year's deadly Astroworld Music Festival. Hundreds of lawsuits were filed against Travis Scott and festival organizers. The law Lawsuits were consolidated. As you may recall, 10 people died and hundreds of others were injured during that event. And we were just talking about it moments ago. The slap heard around the world last night during the Oscars. You know, Will Smith walked up on stage, slapped Chris Rock after making a joke about Smith's wife. Uh, Rock had poked fun at Jada Pinkett Smith's hair. Now, Pinkett Smith, she's been open about being diagnosed with alopecia and her struggle with hair loss. Yeah, we're following how the Film Academy is responding. That is coming up at four o'clock and see that I know that's the only angle that we have but I'm still not sure he made contact with his face i.e. did so it, it appeared yeah it appeared oh, that he, it's hard to I, I've yeah, never, no, I haven't he seen did. a picture he did yeah sure? okay. he, he certainly did because it it also took Chris Rock a second to get himself together I think the composure part yeah. of it um yeah I, I'm I, also not convinced though that it wasn't a hoax though for ratings I I don't know I don't think that was a hoax. I think a lot of viewers initially thought it was, right. and then the comments made afterward, yeah. like Will Smith was definitely not joking around. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what happened after the acceptance speech and things like that, I mean, I think at that point we would have gotten some clarity, um, but I, I just, I think it was adults behaving badly. Yeah, yeah. My question is, if, if The Rock or Steven Spielberg had been the one who made the joke, would Will Smith have got, gotten up and did what he did? Someone who I.E. has more power and is yeah. bigger than him. Well, that's why Orlando even said, he goes, it was not a punch, it was a slap, because he thought, you know, certainly if it was a punch, that Chris he Rock would have fallen. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah, it's crazy. I don't think he would have done Without a doubt, rock. adults behaving badly. Yeah. I think The Rock would have uh, given Will Smith some problems. Yeah, <laughs> probably would have grabbed sure. his hand quickly. You know, finger point still works, just a finger point, stop yeah. that. <laughs> They do. Tisk, touch tisk. anybody. <laughs> well, certainly not the end of that story, right? No. Guys? <laughs> okay, we'll see you at 4 o'clock. Okay. Thanks. Well, you know, on another high note here, the pandemic, of course, hit the restaurant industry especially hard, and some of those bars and restaurants really need our help. Yeah, they sure do. Veteran nightlife expert John Taffer traveled to Texas with his show Bar Rescue, and Lauren Kelly got to chat with him all about the struggling bars he's helped get back on their feet. Lauren, this is so cool. I love this show, you guys. Fans of the show know John Taffer as a larger-than-life TV personality who takes a no-holds-barred approach to helping restaurants and bars reach their full potential. And now he's officially back touring the country with Bar Rescue to help give failing businesses one last chance at success. They even said they should get a penalty, so we have one more penalty over here. You support the penalty? Okay, penalty two, supported by that table. How long have you guys been waiting? Fifteen. Is that worthy of a penalty or not? Okay, another penalty. That's penalty three, so come on, guys. For our viewers who have not seen Bar Rescue, why don't you tell them the actual synopsis of the show? What is your job to go in and do? You know, I, I'm dropped into bars that, that are, are deeply in debt, deeply failing, and I'm given four days to turn them around, four days. And really, I get there the first night, so it's really three days uh, by the time you really look at it, Warren. And uh, after those three days, I have to change the future or, or their trajectory of their future. And the biggest, most powerful lesson I've learned is every failing business, Warren, has a failing owner. So I can build bars with my eyes closed. You know that. But right. how do I fix that failing owner? I got to change him or her or them to create success. That's the challenge is to change their behavior in only three days. That's why it gets so intense because there's a clock ticking in my head every minute. I don't have time for you to get on board at your speed, Warren. You're getting on board now. <laughs> and, and, 
<laughs> you know, that creates this aggressiveness. So this season, the new episodes are coming Sundays at 10 o'clock on Paramount Network. We see that you've got three stops in Texas. Thank gosh, none of them are in Houston this time. But they, <laughs> like, I've been in the one that you've done before, and it, it, look, it's magnificent. But this time, we're focusing on the greater Dallas area. Do you see yeah. something in common when you step into a Texas bar? Do you get a Texas feel just to kind of across the whole state? Well, you know, I grew up in New York. Uh, I lived in California. Now I live in, in Las Vegas. So let me speak to the way you feel when you just come to Texas. Texas is America. You feel it. You see it everywhere in the flags, in the attitude, in the patriotism. It's a very special place. You know, you see the greatest of America when you come to Texas, dare I say. And I'm not diminishing any other state because every state is wonderful and has great attributes. But, you know, when you think of America, you know, Texas to me is sort of centerpiece of that perception. I just hope that we give off that Southern hospitality that you just complimented oh, so nicely. Uh, thank you so much, yeah. John. We appreciate that. Well, Bar Rescue Sundays at 10 p.m. on the Paramount Network. We can't wait to watch you get even more aggressive than you have. Hey, look, you just celebrated over 200 episodes. You've saved so yes. many different places. It's just, it's just a wonderful thing that you do, John, and we're glad that you were able to come back to the great state of Texas, and we can't wait to watch the new episodes of Bar Rescue. Great, thank you. Such a pleasure to talk to you, Lauren. What a cool guy. I love chatting with him. For my full interview with John Taffer, just log on to HoustonLife.tv. I really love that show, Bar Rescue. You guys, it's so much fun. And in other celebrity news, the Foo Fighters are on people's yes. minds, of course, after the drummer's sudden death. And tomorrow, I'm going to be talking with Dave Grohl from the they Foo Fighters. They even said they should get about a, their latest project. So, wow. uh, and that was shocking unrelated, news. Very shocking news. Very, very sad to hear. Taylor, obviously, one of the best drummers that there ever was. In history. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a good interview um, about their latest project. So we'll chat with Dave tomorrow. All right, Sounds Lauren. Great. Looking forward to that. Sure. All right. After the break, guys, the red carpet was hot last night at the Oscars. We're going to show you how you can get that same look without that celebrity budget. Style expert D. Ware is in the house. She's going to show us how it's done when Houston Life returns right after this. We're continuing our Oscar coverage to chat about my favorite part of the event, and of course, that's the fashion. And the men looked good last night, too. Everybody did. We always talk about the women. The men looked good. Style expert Dee Ware is here to show us how we can get those red carpet looks without the celebrity budget. Dee, welcome back to Houston Life. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. We always love seeing you. Last time you were on the show, you were telling us about your shopping tours, which you're still doing. Yes. But during the pandemic, a lot of people just hired you to come and help them purge their closets. Yes, right? so styling picked up a whole lot. Capsule wardrobes, purging, personal shopping, that kind of thing. Okay. All the things. Lessons and as more. we're getting out of our house too, she also does some really great ideas for packing and traveling. So just keeping throwing <laughs> it out there. All right, let's talk about the trends of the evening because this red carpet, how would you describe <sighs> this year's Oscar red carpet? I would say glamorous, sort of old Hollywood. It was very glam. I love I love glam. Me too. Um, I'm so excited about people dressing up again and uh, things like that. Very feminine also. We had some feminine silhouettes and um, lots of great spring colors. Yeah, so big, bold colors. I love it. Okay, Dee, you've broken down five examples for us. Each yes. look is under 100 bucks. So, again, low budge, right? Not the celebrity budget. Let's mm -hmm. get into the first look. All right, so the first look here is, of course, from Ariana DuBose, and we love it. So here we have the elevated pants suit. Mm -hmm. Okay, she looks and great. she looks great. Um, it's a a feminine look, but very powerful. Lots of structure to it. Um, the look we have here for it is going to be a black pantsuit with a detachable tool train. I love that. So, you know, when I see this, I think about wedding guests. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or kind of a night out on the town dancing if you want to for a more fluid um, look on the dance floor. And then you can take it off. Maybe Maybe not for work because it's cropped, <laughs> right? But you can still be really cute in it. Yeah. yeah and on the dance floor with a little breeze, I bet oh, that's uh, yes, very, very yes. nice. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next one. And this one we are highlighting H-Town's own Megan Thee Stallion. She looked fabulous. She looked 
fabulous, very pulled together, very feminine again and whimsical. What we're looking at here is going to be the cutout detail, mm -hmm. though. That's kind of what we're highlighting here today is the cutout. We had a couple of celebrities right here, okay, em Emilia Jones. Very, very feminine, a nice cutout here, and translating that into now. So you can get the cutoff detail look off the rack. Okay. Um, we have it here today in a blaze dress blazer look. Okay, with mm. the cutouts there on the side. Yes, yes. And this can this blazer actually is a good length for a again date night um, party vibe or you can throw it on with some jeans and a heel and you know little just wear it as a long blazer yeah yeah, yeah. A little peek yeah. is a surprise okay we got to cruise through these last looks uh, Zendaya is your inspiration for the next one okay so Zendaya crisp white button down shirt you cannot go wrong with it with the right bottom skirt shorts pants very classic Look. And Uma Thurman uh, rocked a, a similar That's look. right. Very classic. Um, but hey, you definitely need one in, the, in your closet. That one has an exaggerated collar, venture style buttons. Yes. Very cute. And I like how you did it there with the uh, the shorts. You can also do it with a lovely back pant. Okay, let's look at the, uh, the we also have a men's look, right? Okay, so for the men's look, I, this is where I'm here for the men's look, the brooches. Yes. I love a jeweled, a bobble, an accessory. Yes. And the men brought the brooches. They oh, did. Men <laughs> wearing brooches. We love it. D-Wear, thank you so much for stopping by. I know we had to cruise through some of these looks, but uh, again, all these outfits are under 100 bucks. They're provided by Tresor Caché Boutique, so uh, connect with D online. Thank you. And Zara for the men's looks, right? That's right. All right, D, great to see you. Thank you, you as well. Thanks so much. All right, coming up, get a head start on spring cleaning. We've got simple ways to help you organize and declutter your home office, whether that workspace is your kitchen table or a nook in your bedroom. Or a closet, right? <laughs> Houston yeah. Life will be right back. Welcome back. Today marks the start of National Cleaning Week. It's a perfect time to jumpstart your spring cleaning. Brooke Reeves, founder of Dwell Well Incorporated, joins us now with great ideas to help us all organize, declutter our home office or home workspace. It's great to see you, Brooke. You too, Derek. Thank you. So step one in this whole process, we got to throw things away, shred them, recycle them. How do we begin? So. It can be very daunting if you have a very messy desk. Yes. So I recommend you take one section at a time. Paperwork, pull it out, and make three piles. You okay. have a trash and shred file, you have an actual file, and then an action file. Okay. And so go through those, you know, if you can, some of those bills it'll say you want to go paperless you know do it right then and there get it done you don't need to keep that much paper and what about the the file scenario because during commercial break we were chatting about how you can use your smartphone now to to yeah. take photos to scan pdfs what should we be filing and what should we be taking pictures of and just saving on our phone i mean i for like certain bills or some account numbers, I will have an album on my phone that has like my home address and that's where all those um, those statements are, like if I need to refer back to them. Um, and then I can eventually download them on my cloud and they don't need to stay on my phone. Okay. Um, but you don't need to keep that much paper for receipts as well, like yeah. take a screenshot. And if you're saving things for, you know, IRS purposes for taxes, they, they'll accept photos. Absolutely. Yeah. D you can, d digital for sure, for sure. Okay, let's talk about this nifty little filer. So once we've decluttered, shredded, recycled, trash, all of that, uh, tell us about why you like this. So I love those because once you're going through your paperwork, this, it's not buried in a file cabinet. It's not out of sight, out of mind. These are action you know, files, and then go through it every single day. Take five minutes, go through your mail, toss it, file it, or take care of it. And so if you stay on top of it every single day, it, it doesn't, doesn't build up like the situation you were in before. It's very, very smart. All right, let's talk about the simple binder as well. What do you use this for? If you don't have a file cabinet, I love binders with page protectors. I have one for my family. Every member has a tab, put papers, important papers in there, or for work, or you know whatever you need them for. So you can just line them up on a shelf. Okay, let's talk about these drawer organizers. Uh, we use these at our house. We use them in the bathroom. They're very helpful. You have them for the home office, clearly. Right, so when you're cleaning out your office, you put all like items together, and then if you have drawers, put them organizers in the drawers. If you don't have drawers, a lot of people are working from home that are not used to working from home during COVID, 
these organizers actually fit in these big sew drawers. Oh. So you can just set up a little station at home Look at and that. put all of your office products in there. I'm just going to tilt this forward so our viewers can see this. So those drawer organizers go fit right perfectly. into this. Yep. And this is not super expensive. I mean, essentially these organizers, this is essentially a beautiful heavy duty cardboard. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the last thing you want to do is label. Label everything. Wherever you choose to store it, make sure you label it. Like here, you know, I've got that way it's there's no mystery as to where everything is. And when you label it, then you spend less time then looking for things. Absolutely. You save angle. money, right? <laughs> okay. And uh, lastly, you have more storage items, but your last tip really is go paperless as frequently as you can. Yes. Take the few minutes and sign up to go paperless. Yeah. And figure out a little organization system that works for you. Like we use the Notes app on our phone. You can yeah. just create a folder, right? Depending yeah. on what it is. Or Adobe Scan is great. And then also, I love this collator. It looks nice for files or binders you can actually store in here. Very nice. Brooke Reeves, thank you so much thank for stopping you, by. It is a lovely home office you've got right here. Thanks if so you would much. like to connect with Brooke, you can check out our website, HoustonLife.tv. All right, coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, you've probably spent some of the last year pretty much working from home. So how do you get rid of any sensitive documents safely? We will take a look at that tomorrow. Don't go away. Houston Life will be right back. Well, that is going to do it for us today. We had a full Oscar recap. We want to thank uh, our friends over at ET for all of the insight ahead of what you're going to see tonight at 630. Yeah, and thanks to all of you for your comments. And uh, I think that does it for Houston Life today, that Courtney. That does. We're going to do it all again tomorrow. Sounds good to me. We're going to send it on over to Studio A, where Keith and Christine are standing by. Hey, guys. Yeah, I hope it was a great Monday for you guys. Um, and we look forward to the rest of the week. Always. Okay, we'll see you guys later. Sounds good.